OK, another um, problem for the ALP is reform, although uh, it, it doesn't necessarily, I guess, equal uh, a problem, but it probably will because the early signs are, are that, that it will. Um, John Faulkner made the statement that he did. Essentially, he had a go at the factions. He had a go at uh, the, the overuse of, uh, of focus groups and so on. Uh, Kevin Rudd then weighed in, and then as a result of that, um, so did Paul Howes. Let's hear from Paul Howes. Kevin Rudd's being a hypocrite. Uh, he is the man that, when he was the leader of the Labor Party, shut down all internal decision-making processes, ignored the caucus, ignored the cabinet, ignored the conference. And the reality is, when Kevin had the power to open up the party, to change the party's processes, he didn't do it. David, even if all of that is true, does, is it helpful for the Labor Party to then personalise it in the way that Paul Howes did? Oh, no, no, it's not helpful. But this is what's got to happen. I mean, what, one of the things that Faulkner was sort of saying is that, that the arguments now have to come out in public. There has to be a public row about the structures of the parties, the way in which people are selected for, for um, office. Um, and this has got to be done not behind closed doors now, not with deals done in private, but it's got to happen in public. And one of the things he's saying is directed to us, and that's to the press and how the press reports debate within a political party, not just the Labor Party. Because we talk about splits, we talk about dissension, we talk about failures of control, mm -hmm. when other people, if this was, say, a company or something, would be talking about discussion on policy, controversy about the way ahead for the party. There's a lot in what Faulkner is saying about the way in which the press looks at political parties and gets real about the nature of debate and stops referring and stops personal, uh, stops, stop reporting vigorous debate as some kind of collapse of authority. I, I agree with that, but, but the point is that Rudd came out immediately and made it about himself. And it was hilarious. Had... It was just hilarious. So it, it wasn't about party reform, it was about Rudd. And then Howes jumps in and says, you know, uh, Rudd was no good anyway, he was a hypocrite and we had to get rid of him. So we went off uh, the debate about what needed to happen to the party structures and back on to mm. personalities. And it started to look like a self-indulgent debate all that. over again. It wasn't the media, but... it was them. And isn't mm. it that situation, I don't really disagree with anything that David or Nikki have said, but... The Labor Party is in, you know, pretty deep doo-doo at the moment. And the one thing, the one thing that could drive their primary vote even lower than it is at the moment is having internal brawling over party rules that nobody in Voterland really cares that much about. Mm. Yes, they need to have these discussions. Sure, they need to have the discussions. But surely airing all that dirty linen in public right now is less important than actually delivering some policy outcomes on all the things that have been yeah. dragging on forever. Like, do they really have the luxury of doing this and, right now? And the other point, there's always a lot of attention on Labor Party reform. For, for some reason, reform within the Liberal Party never interests the media quite to the same extent, and yet they've got the same problems with the lack of democracy, the same problem with the lack of uh, members, uh, and now the added spice of a, of a leadership challenge at the top end with uh, Peter Reith now wanting Alan Stockdale's uh, position. Let's hear from Peter Reith. Quite frankly, I think quite a few things need to be done. And, I mean, some people have said, wait a year. I, look, quite frankly, I'm, I'm impatient. I think we need to give the place a bit of a shake-up. I've made a whole lot of recommendations to do that. Some people won't like them. We don't just stage manage the situation. We've taken the stage down and uh, put it in the, you know, in, the, in the back cupboard. Is he going to win this, Nicky? He's talking. <laughs> uh, look, there is uh, an awful lot of opposition uh, in the Liberal Party to this. I mean, I always reckon that the worst place to stand, the most dangerous place to be, was between Peter Reith and a television camera. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really frightens a lot of uh, Liberals now, that nothing has changed. And from their point of view, an invisible party president is the best party president. And mm. the problem with Reith is that he never knows when to shut up, he never <laughs> knows when to pull back uh, from debates, and they're very worried that he will be a magnet mm. and that he will uh, intervene in debates, especially on issues like um, IR. He won't be able to help himself. Right. So Isn't... if he could confine himself to just reforming the party and reorganising the party, that would be great. But... Isn't the greater danger for the Liberal Party is to have as a president somebody who not one word ever comes out of his mouth is believed. I mean, this is, <laughs> oh, this is, unkind, this is the man whose reputation for truthfulness has been more comprehensively shredded than any politician
politician probably in the last 20 years in this country. Oh, well, that's, that's a big call, I reckon. It's a very big call, but I'd defend it. Waterfront, kids overboard. All right, we'll have to leave it there for the moment. More with our panel shortly. Lenore Taylor, Nikki Saber and David Marr. But now here's Mike Bowles and Talking Pictures.